Hi, my name is Winnie. I want you to imagine. Can you imagine? I'm going to say something and I want you to imagine, okay? I want to imagine that you live in a place. Close your eyes and imagine you live in a place and the government is awful. Instead of protecting you, the government hurts you. Close your eyes. Imagine. The government takes all your things away, including your Lego and your Barbies. And, and, uh, and your house. And the government takes all these things and give them to the very, very rich people. So you end up being really, really poor. And your parents have to work so hard every day just so that you have bread to eat. If they don't work that day because they are sick, you don't even have bread to eat, nothing to eat. And that's how the Israelites, the Jews, God's people lived for a long, long time under the Roman Empire. This is the time when Jesus was born. God knew that his people were suffering and God knew that his people had been suffering for a long time. And he promised that one time he would send a hero. He would send a savior called the Messiah. So you can imagine God's people were waiting waiting because they were suffering so much. They were waiting for God to send this Messiah to come and save them from this evil government, right? Evil. <laughs> evil. evil. In that time, there lived a woman. Her... Now, this woman, no, she's not Moana. This woman, when she was, she was a young woman and she got married she was so happy, but only seven years after being married, her husband died. But instead of getting married again, she went to the temple every day to praise and worship God. She was chatting with God and catching from God. She did it so much, she became a professional God catcher. It's called a prophetess. So she would get messages from God, and that was her job. She would get messages from God, and she would give the messages to God's people who were waiting for this Messiah, and she would encourage them. Be patient. God promised, so he will send a Messiah. Okay, everyone? Okay, everyone? Okay, all right. Her name was... Anna, not Mo Anna. It's Anna. In that time, there also lived a man. Not Ken. Now, this man loved God and he studied God's word and he made good choices in his life. He lived his life to glorify God. And he too was amazing at chatting and catching from God. One day, he too was waiting for the Messiah and the hero, right? And one day when he was chatting and catching from God, whoop, he caught something. God said to him, you will not die until you see this savior. I promise I will send this savior, I will, and you will see him before you die. So he was very excited, and he's like, yep, I'm going to wait patiently. And his name was? Simeon. Simeon. His name was Simeon. Look, such a distinguished gentleman. Look at him. No, not Ken. One day, one day, remember how Anna? One day, now Anna had waited a long time, every day going to the temple, so long her, her hair turned white. She became an old lady. She waited so long. She was 84 years old. Everyone said 84 years old. 84 years old. Now, now, when you see other people who are 84 years old, please don't go to them and say, you are so old. But Anna was old. She was 84 years old when something amazing happened. So, 
Simeon was going about his business, also old, his hair turned white. Uh, he was going about his business and he was chatting and catching from God and one day the Holy Spirit prompted him, psst, psst, go to the temple. He went, oh, what? Okay, I'll go to the temple. So he went to the temple, ran to the temple. Maybe not run because he was old then. He, he, he walked as fast as he could without breaking anything. He got to the temple and he's like, okay, God, what is it? What do you want me to do at the temple? So he looked around and he saw, oh, a young man and a young woman and a baby. Oh, well, hang on. The Holy Spirit said, psst, psst, Messiah. And I was gonna say Ken. No, Simeon. <laughs> Simeon got so excited, he ran over and he said, can I please hold your baby? And Mary, being very kind, said, sure. So he held the baby and he said, God, you promised to send us the Messiah to save us from this cruel, awful place. And you did. He is here now. And I have now seen him. And now I can die in peace. He was so happy. And then just imagine, you use your imagination, the baby is in his arms. And along came Anna, as fast as she could, because, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so Anna came along and she went, oh my goodness, it has happened. And she praised God. And then she went to the people, remember her job? She went to the people and she encouraged the people and she told them about Jesus, that he has finally come. So yes, so that Simeon and Anna, no, they did not kiss and get married. Um, <laughs> now, what can we learn from Simeon and Anna? Firstly, they both loved God and they chatted with God and they caught from God all the time. We can also learn that when God makes promises, like I will send the Messiah, God keeps his promises. But sometimes we do have to wait. But no matter how long we have to wait, God always keeps his promises. Also, when the Holy Spirit prompts them, they obeyed, right? Imagine if Simeon, the Holy Spirit, psst, psst, go to the temple, nah, I'll go fishing. Then he would have missed this whole thing, right? But no, they obeyed the Holy Spirit. Do you know? They both also have something in common. What is it? They're both very, very, very old. Uh, yes, that's right. Thank you, Sandra. <laughs> that was unexpected. All right. I got married to my lovely husband when I was 24 years old. My husband's name's Tim, and Tim loves children, and I am crazy about babies. I love babies. And immediately, we wanted babies, and we asked God to give us babies. We prayed, we waited, we waited, we waited. No babies. Turned out I can't have babies. My body can't have babies. And we were very sad. And we chatted with God and we said, God, but there must be children out there who need a home. Would, would it be okay if we adopted a child to give this child a home? We want a child and the child needs a home. And in our hearts, we caught from God. Tim caught from God saying, yes, with me, I caught in my heart that God told me, you are going to be a mother of nations. So we prayed, we waited, we went and made inquiries, we talked to all the people we needed to with government and everything, we filled out some forms, and then we waited. We prayed and we waited. And one day I felt the Holy Spirit prompt me, psst, psst, do something about it. And I went, okay. And then I went and then I talked to more people and filled out more forms. That week itself, I got a phone call that there was a baby who needed a home and we ended up adopting him and he became our precious, precious baby. And God kept his promise, right? He, we, he, he made us parents, but his promise was that I would be a mother of nations, right? And we waited some more. We waited another nine years and then God brought us not one more baby, but two more babies. And all three of my babies are from different nations. So I am a mother of nations. When God makes a promise, 
he keeps it. So bring it back to Simeon and Anna and me. What can we learn? We can be confident and thankful that when God makes a promise, he keeps it. Secondly, we need to be aware when the Holy Spirit is prompting us, when we catch in our heart, that we obey him. Now, children, I wanna name a few promises that God has for you, and I want you this morning to take a hold of one of those promises, and you're gonna stand on those promises, okay? Firstly, God promised that he will love us forever. Some of you children watching online and here, you feel very lonely. You feel that you're not good enough. You don't feel that you're truly loved. Second promise is that he promised to always be with us. This is particularly if you are someone who would get anxious. It is very important for you to remember that God is always with you, especially when you feel that anxiety. Thirdly, God promised to hear us when we pray. And he promised that he's going to answer us according to what he thinks is best. Okay? And he promised that Jesus would one day come back again and take us to the new heaven and the new earth, where there'll be no more tears, no more pain, no more sorrows. When God makes a promise, he keeps it. Children, which promise do you need to hold on to? I'm going to invite Melissa up here. We're going to pray for you. I want you to remember that promise that you need to hold on to now, okay? And we're going to pray. God, I want to thank you that you, when you make a promise, you keep it. I pray that you help us through this Christmas season. Every time we see the baby Jesus, we remember that you promised Simeon and Anna, you promised the people of Israel that you would send the Messiah, and you did. So Lord, I pray for the children today, those who need to hold on to the promise that you love them no matter what, or that you are with them no matter what, and that when we pray, you hear us and you answer us in your time and giving us what you think is best. And Lord, I just pray for Holy Spirit, you will be reminding the children and us, uh, the grown-ups, <laughs> that you will be reminding us of your promise and we can trust you to keep your promise. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.